Hey, how's it going everybody? This is Jesse and I am ready to do the very first video tutorial. Hope you guys are all ready and uh, here to have some fun because we're going to be painting Lola the Llama. Miss Lola the Llama. Check out Miss Lola. Very cutie, patootie. Um, white, black, pink, blue, uh, purple, but you guys can change things up, okay? You don't have to follow exactly what I do. If you have some other ideas as to what you want to do with Miss Lola the Llama, it's all up to you. Um, right before we actually get going, I'm going to be um, talking about the materials and stuff very quickly, but you can also look for a list of those materials in the bottom in the description for this video, okay? Once again, like, subscribe, share, and uh, also hit the alert button so that whenever I upload new videos, you get notified. Also, don't forget that I do requests you have a particular character, uh, animal, etc., that you'd like to see on here, leave a message in the comments section below, and perhaps we'll do a video tutorial on that. All right, everybody, let's get going. Okay, everyone, whoops, I think I left out a couple of colors here, black. Okay, let me get going here. I need a quick change over to my painting clothes because I don't want to get my Nice clothes, dirt, clothes dirty. I've got a superhero shirt on that says, trust me, I'm a superhero. I've got my apron here to protect my clothing. I do recommend that, especially if you're working with acrylic paint. Acrylic paint is uh, paint that once it's dried, especially on clothing, it is very difficult to take off, if not impossible. So I highly recommend you wear an apron and clothes that you don't mind permanently, permanently uh, staining if you get paint on it. If, if you're working for a more water soluble paint like tempera, that can also stain, although not as much as acrylic, so do be careful. I'm also wearing my little cool artist cap hat that I like to wear whenever I do some painting. Sometimes, not all the time. If I were, they just don't want to brush my hair. Anyway, so here we go. What colors are we going to use today? We're going to use some blue, we're going to use some white, we're going to use some green. We're going to use some black. We're going to use some pink. We're going to use some, I might have missed something, blue, green, purple, black, purple, pink, white. All right. But like I mentioned earlier, you can change your colors up. It's up to you. So uh, brushes, some basic brushes that I have here. You'll get a close up of them in a moment when I come around to the other side and start to uh, draw and stuff. In a little while, you'll get, you'll get a close up. So I've got a, a one inch brush. Flat, nothing fancy. Uh, this is about a three quarters inch brush. Sorry, yeah, three quarters inch brush, half inch brush will do. I, I've got a very small quarter inch brush. I like I call them quarter inch. Um, that's about the size for those of you that aren't familiar with it, familiar with the numbering system at home. This is a number six flat brush. However, I call it quarter inch so that those of you that are at home have a general idea as to what the size of the brush, the thickness of the brush is, all right? And then I've got a skinny little uh, brush called a liner brush. Uh, this just is going to allow me to create some really small, tiny, skinny lines, okay? So those are the brushes you're going to be needing. Uh, again, nothing too fancy. So let's draw this thing first. Uh, number two pencil is fine. Any artist pencil is fine. It's uh, nothing too specific. We're not going to get too fancy with the drawing. You just need something to be able to to draw the piece onto whatever material, material you're drawing this onto. I'm using an eight by 10 canvas. You can use um, construction paper, you can use paper, you can use uh, canvas boards, you can use wood, etc. It just depends on whatever it is that you're gonna be. All that matters is that whatever you're going to be drawing this onto when you apply the paint, if you're going to apply paint, then it's not gonna get soggy on you, okay? All right, everybody, let's get to drawing. Okay, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, sorry if it gets a little shaky. I know I'm going to be hitting the screen here sometimes. Let's see. Hold on. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here we go. If, if things get a little shaky from time to time, I do apologize. I accidentally may hit the um, camera stand. Uh, it's right behind me, so it might get a little, a little wobbly from time to time. I'll try to avoid that as much as I possibly can. So, what do we got here? We got Lolo the Llama looking at you guys. Look at her pretty little eyes with the eyelashes and her pretty pink little nose. She has a little pretty flower headband on top, right? She's got this little tuft of hair back here. 
So whenever you guys are about to draw anything, anything that you're gonna draw, even if you've never drawn before, this is how, I'm gonna show you guys what I do. This is how I, how I uh, start a drawing. I'll look at my subject first, right? So we got Lola. What do I see? I look at the overall picture. Here's what I see. Here's how I see this, and maybe it'll make sense. I see this circle right here. Even though you don't see the bottom part of the circle, her head is essentially a circle. It's practically a circle. Okay, so I see that first. The neck is like a like a rectangle or a box below that circle. So you got the circle and then there's a box. What I'm doing is my 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 brain is breaking it down, breaking the picture down so it makes it easier for me to understand what it is that I'm going to draw. The next thing I notice is the ears. What do the ears look like? Long triangles. You got these long triangles on top of the head. Long triangle. So we got a circle, we got a box, and then we got some triangles up on top. Okay, what about the, the snout? The snout looks like an egg to me. It's like an egg shape, right? It's almost a circle, but not quite. So the bottom part looks more like a circle, but look at it, it narrows, narrows up a little bit. It looks like a giant egg. If you were to block the mouth and the nose and everything else, it would look like a giant egg, okay? And then the eyeballs, what do the eyeballs look like? They look like kind of like ovals, right? Sideways ovals, kind of, kind of. So that helps me make sense of what I'm going to do. So the first thing I'm gonna start with is this head, all right? So we go to the head first. Okay, we got a circle. We're gonna do a circle here. And the head is about, if you were, whatever you're drawing on, just leave some space on top because you're gonna need some space for your ears, okay? So be careful wherever you start the top of your head. Here's what I'm taking. I told you guys earlier, this is a, any any pint kind of pencil will do. I'm not gonna, I'm not, I don't normally do any really hard um, pencil marks because I wanna be able to erase if I make a mistake. But for you guys at home, first I'm going to do it lightly, then I'm going to go over it and make it darker so it's easier for you, for you to see it on the camera. All right? So here I go. Lightly at first. Okay? So all I'm doing is doing a, just kind of a basic circle for the head. Okay? Basic circle. Look how I'm doing this. Nice and light. It's about almost the center of the canvas. Actually, a little bit higher than the center. So if you compare that this is the top of my circle, it's probably a little bit higher than the actual hot top of the head is. I'm not talking about the tuft of hair, I'm talking about this right here, okay? A little bit higher than that. So, um, so yeah, I wanna be careful. I wanna be careful that I don't go up too high. If I notice that I made a mistake, and I think I did in this case, I'm gonna drop it down just a little bit, okay? I'm gonna come like this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna correct it. I'm gonna correct my, my, my head a little tiny bit, all right? Okay, again, so I lightly made a, just made a little correction. Brought the head down a little bit, okay? So here's my head, here's what I've drawn. This right here is pretty much this right in here, okay? So for those of you at home, I know it's hard to see on the canvas with the camera, so I'm gonna darken this up. I'm going to darken this up a little bit. I wouldn't, I don't recommend this for those of you at home, okay, to darken it up, it's not necessary. You are going to, you're going to be painting over this and I don't want dark lines. If you make a mistake and you want to fix it, I don't want these dark lines to get in your way. Okay. So I just made it darker for those of you at home to be able to see that. Okay, cool. So what about my neck? What did I say about the neck? It's a box. So I can, again, I'm going to do this lightly. Okay. So here's my box. So I bring this down like this. Okay. And then I just connect the sides like this. Okay. And there, what do I have? I've got this shape right here. Okay, I got this shape all the way around. If I wanted to, I could come in here and erase this. Okay, erase, sorry, erase this. Okay, I can take that off. And maybe I'll do that in just a little bit. What do we got next? We got some ears. What did I say about those ears? They're triangles. So let's start with the one on the left. Okay, we're gonna go about right here. A couple of things, everyone, if you're doing this at home, right? Or at school or whatever it, wherever it is that you're watching this, everybody's drawing is going to end up looking, everybody's Lola is going to end up looking a little bit different, right? Don't worry too much about it being exactly like mine or exactly like your neighbors. That's not what it's about. Everybody creates something a little bit different, differently. Um, it's a little bit, a little bit different, right? So if yours doesn't end up looking just like mine, please don't stress about that. Yours is going to look fine regardless. Okay. So there's my ear. There are my ears. Okay. So so, um, so what I'm going to do here is just kind of bring these two lines together a little bit. Just round, I'm just rounding these off a little bit 
to make those lines a little bit smoother. So here we go. And again, I can come in here and erase these lines in here because we don't need them. I'll do that in just a little bit, okay? What am I going to work on next? Let's work on that snout. So before we get moving on the, on the shape of the snout, I want to point out. So here's my circle, right? Here's about where my circle is. The snout, the top of the snout. So if you were to take the circle and look at the middle of it, right? You, this is about the middle of the circle, right about here. The snout starts about an inch or so higher. So the, again, depending on what you're, what you're drawing on, just make sure that your snout, the top of the snout, doesn't start in the middle of your circle. So here's my circle. Here's the middle of my circle. So that would, so this is about right here, okay? So what I want to do is I want to go up a little bit, about right there, and that's where I'm going to draw the top of my snout line. Okay, that now is this, okay? So from there, I can also draw the bottom. The bottom is about right here, okay? Kind of a round little circle-ish thing. Now I'm going to connect everything. Remember, what do we say about the shape of the snout? It looks kind of like an egg, kind of like an egg. So again, nice and light. That's all I'm going to do. Okay, there's my snout. Um, now I'm going to come in and do my eyes. Okay, the shape of my eyes. What did I say about those eyes? They're ovals. So about the top of the snout is where those eyes are, right here, like right about here. So that's about, about where they start. And I'm going to come down slightly at an angle, just like that. There's one eyeball or one eye. I'll come over to, to the other side and do the same thing. So about at the top of my snout, maybe just a little bit higher is where, is where it starts. And we'll go like this, little oval, little oval, okay? One on each side. And from time to time, I'll look at what I'm drawing and make little changes to it if I need to. Remember that we're going to be, co we're going to be covering this up with paint. So I'm not really super stressed about how many lines I've gotten stuff. I just want to make sure that my general shapes are nice. We're having fun with this. We're not stressing out. You're not worried so much that it has to be perfect. Have some fun with this, okay? If you don't get it right the first time, first, first time this video is always going to be up, so you can you can always come back and do it again, okay? So, all right, there's our there's our snout. Uh, let's do let's do the eyelashes, okay? Look at the eyelashes. I want to point something out here. Like, let's look at this eyelash here. This is a part of a circle, basically, right? Remember, we're looking at the overall shapes. It makes it easier for our brain to understand what we're going to draw. So this is, if I was to do this, watch this, start the circle here and I go like this, I could go all the way around if I wanted to and create a circle. Same with this one, but this one would be a bigger circle. What I'm trying to get at is all you're doing is drawing part of a circle for each one of these eyelashes. All right, so let's start with this one. So here I go, watch me do it first. All I'm going to do is part of a circle, right? And I stop right about there. And I can bring it out a little further if I want. Doesn't matter too much. So let's go with this one now. Here I go. Part of a circle. And it's a little bit longer. All right. Third one. Part of a circle and a little bit longer. I look at them. If I feel like I want to make an adjustment, I can. If I like the way they look, I leave them alone. Okay. But let's do the other eye now. Same thing. And anytime, folks, if I'm going too fast, simply pause the video. Okay. Go back if you need to go back, etc. No need to follow along exactly with me or at my speed, okay? I'm only going a little bit quickly for those of you that are going to be moving a little bit faster than others. Uh, also, just so the video isn't super long, okay? So here we go. All right. Not part of a circle, okay? One in the middle, part of a circle. Then the one in the bottom, part of a circle, all right? I like the ones in the middle being a little bit longer than the ones on the top and bottom, maybe a little tiny bit, so I just make some adjustments. I look at what I've got, okay, do I like it? Do I need to make any adjustments? Mm, I like it, okay, so we're gonna leave, we're gonna keep moving here. Let's do the inside of the, of the snout. What do we have here, the nose? What does that look like to you guys? The overall shape of that, what does that look like? It looks like a heart, right? We've got a heart there, so let's do that. Here we go, heart. All you're doing is drawing a little heart. Right? We all know how to draw a heart, I think. Take your time with it. You can even practice on another piece of paper next to you. Practice a little bit and then come over and do it, okay? So there's my heart. Now what do we have? We have the mouth. This is the, the mouth of the llama, right? We did the snout, we did the nose, and now we got the mouth. What is the mouth? It looks like an upside down V. Part of it anyway does, right? The middle part. Look at that. If you were to flip that over, that would look just like a V. 
So we're going to do start with an upside down V. All right. Everybody draw an upside down V. There we go. All right. And then what do we got? Well, we got these two little lines that attach, but they curve out towards the sides of the snout. So here we go. Curve it out. Curve it out. Look at that. All right. Good. Take a look at your llama. Make sure you're happy with it. And then we move on to the next step. What's the next step? We got this little tuft of hair right there. Okay. So we're going to, so take a look at what we've got. Remember, break everything down into shapes. We got a little triangle. We got almost another triangle, 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 just a bunch of little kind of triangle looking shapes, right? So we'll start at the top. Triangle, triangle, kind of triangle, 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 triangle. Okay. If you, if that was too fast for you, just back up a little bit and watch it again. You can go back, watch what I do a couple of times, and then do it, all right? Also, it helps if you have a piece of paper next to you, a scratch piece of paper, trash piece of paper that you can practice these shapes on. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit of erasing on some of these lines. Give me just a moment. Okay, everyone, so here's what I did. I forgot to mention, one good thing to always have with you when, while, you're doing, while you're creating art painting is to have some paper towels with you. Okay, I have a roll of paper towels. I grabbed a couple and we'll put one aside over here just in case I need it later. But for now, here's what I'm going to do to erase on here. I can use my eraser if I want to, but if you're painting on canvas or if you're drawing on canvas, it may be easier to do it like this. Grab a paper towel. I've got a cup with some water in there. I dip my paper towel in there. I squeeze out, I squeeze out the excess water. I'm not sure if you guys all caught that. Paper towel dipped into the cup, squeezed out some of the excess. Now, I'm not trying to erase every single bit of every line that I don't like or that I don't want. I just want to come in and lightly remove some of what I've got on here just so that it makes it easier for me to see where I'm going to be painting and where I'm going to be, um, you know, where my edges are and things like that. So I'm just, again, just lightly coming in like under the ears, right? I'm removing some lines there, some of the, you know, the lines that I did initially. So... Again, there's going to be paint over this, so I'm not too stressed over how much of this I end up removing. And for the, remember earlier I said don't make your lines too dark? <clears throat> this is why you don't want to make them dark. You want to be able to more easily erase them whenever you want. All right? Okay, so next step. Pretty much the only thing that's left is the little headband. We're not going to do that right now. We're going to do, leave that for last when we're actually painting. Okay? We're not doing anything with the headband. But what we are going to do is we're going to create the little nostrils, these guys here, okay? These two little lines at an angle, okay? And then the little line in the middle in between that connects to the bottom of the nose, okay? There's that. And then the last thing that we're going to do, oh, sorry, two things. The inside of the ears, these right here, okay? The in inside like this, smaller triangles, a couple little smaller triangles. They don't have, you don't have to close them off at the bottom. You can if you want. Right here. In other words, you don't, you, you can close them off if you want. Oh, might as well. All right, just like that. Okay, and then the fur. What about the fur on the outside of the llama? So, all these little guys right here. Right there. These are almost like little ocean waves. Almost. Or like little teeth. Okay, and all I'm going to do is starting on my left ear, I'm just going to slightly do this. All the way down. Nothing perfect. Yours is going to look different from mine. Mine's different from yours. It's different from your neighbors. If you're painting with somebody else, parents, if you're doing this with your children, yours, yours will look different from your child's or children and children. Yours are going to look different from your parents, etc., etc. Okay. So again, we're not stressing over that. Everybody's llama, everybody's Lola is going to look a little bit different. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, there is Lola. I'm going to darken these up a little bit. So we're, we're done with the drawing session. In a moment, I'm going to come back with the paint, my little paint plate, my brushes, and we're going to get ready to paint her, okay? All right, be right back. Okay, everyone, I am back. Whoops, I'm going to raise the brightness on this just a touch make my video look a little nicer and I think it's probably easier for you to see what I'm doing. So I've got my paint, my paint plate right here. Okay. Um, here are the colors that I'm using black, purple, P 
pink. This is kind of a neon pink, but again, don't worry about that too much. Just any pink will do. You could always make pink by mixing red and white if that's what you've got. I've got a little bit of gold, some green, some blue, and some white. And if I'm missing anything, I'll add it later. I think that's those are all the colors that we've got. Again, everyone, if you want to make some changes to your colors, please do so. No big deal. Oh, and I'm also using acrylic paint. I think I've already talked about that, but I'm working with acrylic paint. Those of you at home, if you're using tempera, tempera paint or any finger paints, uh, any water, more water soluble stuff, that's perfectly fine as well. You could even do this in colored pencil. You could do this in crayon. All of that is up to you. Okay. So my brushes, I've got my four brushes in my cup. Um, if you've only got three, if you've only got two, you're going to be fine. Okay. You just adjust accordingly. I've also got some paper towels. I think I've already talked about that, but I got my paper towels over here. Oh, I'm also drinking a little bit of tea. So for uh, when my voice starts to dry out as, as I'm talking too much. Mm -hmm. Okay, everyone. So I am back and I've got um, the original here next to what we just drew, right? For reference, I've got my paint plate. By, by pa paint plate, I mean where I'm putting my, my um, uh, paint onto. I can mix my colors. I'm going to have a second plate underneath where I'm going to might I might do some mixes. Okay, so if you want to have a second plate with you, that's perfect, or a second palette, whatever it is that you're using to um, put your paints onto. I've got oh colors that I'm working with: black, purple, pink, <clears throat> gold, green, blue, and white. Uh, if you want to change your colors up, please feel free to do so. I'm not going to get mad at you. Um, Brushes. I've got the four brushes that I talked about earlier. There's a little close-up. Here is my my inch brush. Um, okay, right? One inch. This is about a three-quarter inch brush. I've got a, about a quarter inch brush, maybe a little less. And then I've got a little tiny liner brush. Any brushes that are similar to those in size will, be, will do just fine. So again, don't stress too much. First thing that I want to talk about is our background color. We have a uh, we have a teal color that I created by mixing blue, green, and white. So that's what we're going to start with. I'm going to take my big brush. Oh, also, I've got the brushes inside my water cup. I'm sure you all noticed that. Okay, it keeps my brushes from drying out, especially once I start to work with the paint. So I'm taking my big brush, my big one-inch brush. Okay, I squeeze out some of that excess water. But I'm also going to use, I don't squeeze it all out because I'm going to use, I'm going to use some of that water. So I take my brush, I squeeze out any excess water. Whoop, probably squeeze out too much. Any excess water, any extra water, I put it onto the plate. Now I'm going to take some green, okay, like this, put it where, the, where I had the water, where I put down the water. I'm going to take a little bit of blue, not too much just yet. <clears throat> then I'm going to take some white, same brush, and I'm mixing all of those together. I'm trying to create a color that's teal. Now that's, but if you want to make green or if you want to use yellow, whatever color you guys want to use, that's up to you. Okay, leave that up to you. But if you're trying to create a color like what I'm using, so here I created a light green. I need to add some more blue if I want it to look teal. So I take some more blue, bring it over. There we go. That's getting to about where I want it to be. You're creating your own color. If yours is lighter than mine or darker than mine or different, completely different, that's perfectly fine. I take, whoops, there we go. I just hit the camera like what I was talking about earlier. Okay, it didn't look, doesn't look like it did too much damage. All right. Take my brush, I'd, I dip it into the water cup, I bring some of that water over, just a few drops, I mix it into the paint. By adding drops of water to the paint, it actually makes the paint easier to work with. So once I've got my mix really, really nice and blended, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and apply it to my canvas. So here's what I'll do, I'll start on the edges first. And as I get closer to Lola's body, I will, um, I'll get close to it, but I won't cover it. I'm not going to go into Lola's body with this brush. In other words, I'm trying to avoid crossing over the edges of my pencil marks. On my eyelashes, I don't mind too much. I can still see them coming through the paint. Besides, I already know where they are, and I can always redo them later. I'm not too worried about those. I'm using upward brush strokes. If you want to do side sideways strokes, that's fine too. It's probably easier if you did... Uh, upward strokes, vertical strokes, up and down, doesn't matter, but uh, straight up and down or vertical strokes, right? Like this, kind of like what I'm doing. Again, I'm not getting too, I'm not getting, I'm getting close to the, to Lola's body, but I'm not 
touching the edges. And if I do, no big deal. I just try to avoid doing that. I don't want to get any paint into Lola's body just yet. Once I've got the front of my canvas covered like this, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and get some more paint and I'm going to do the top. If you're doing a canvas painting, I understand some of you may not be using canvases for this. No big deal. Okay. I'm just doing this because I don't, if I decide to hang up my canvas and if those of you at home like the way it looks, if you hang it up, it's nice to have the edges painted, but this is optional, right? So, I'm just doing the right and the left and I'm doing the top, but I'm not touching the bottom. The bottom I will do at the very, very end. Okay. For those of you at home, if your background color is coming out too light where you can see some of the canvas coming through, don't worry about it. We're going to let that dry for a bit and you can always come back and do another layer over it. Okay. The brush that I'm not using, I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it back into my water cup. Yes, my water is going to get dirty over time. I'm not worried about that. If I need to, I'll change it out. Okay, now I'm switching over. I'm going to switch over to this brush right here. It's a little bit smaller. It gives me a little bit more control. And now what I'm going to do is use this one to come in and work these little corners, right? The little uh, tighter edges, like in the fur and stuff. Again, I'm trying to avoid painting into Lola's body. I can get a little bit inside of it by accident or whatever. That won't make a big deal, but I don't want to do that too much. So like the ears and stuff, I come close, right? I, hopefully you can all see what I'm, what I'm doing at home. Try not to block the view. I know it's kind of, it might be hard to see what I do from time to time. So I got to be aware that you guys are watching at home and I want to not block what I'm doing with my arms, with my hands. Okay, so like that. Again, all I'm trying to do is avoid getting paint inside of Lola's body and I'm using this small, smaller brush to control my brush strokes. A little tricky to do it so you guys can all see. So bear with me if it looks kind of awkward, but you get the idea, okay? So, so, that, so I've done the outside of Lola's body. Let me see if I can bring it up a little closer and you guys can see what's going on, right? Like around here, around the ears, I avoid, I avoided trying to get into, I avoided putting any paint into Lola's body. All right, all right. So I can just kind of touch some of these areas up a little bit to make them look a little smoother, a little bit more like the rest of the canvas. All right. There we go. All right. So what's next? We're gonna add some white to Lola's body. All right. So. Take my brush, swirl it around. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick to this brush that I'm using. I'm going to keep using this brush, but I want to clean it up a little bit because I don't want to have any green paint that's on the brush mixing up with my white that I'm going to use on Lola's body. So I clean it up, clean it up a bit. Again, I swirl it around in there, bring it over. I, want, I, I check it by brushing it into my paper towel, and as long as I'm getting little... No, or very little bit of green, very little green, I'm okay. Now I'm going to take white, okay? I don't, don't need to do any mixing with this white because it's pure white on her body. And all I'm going to, so all I'm doing is taking that white directly from my paint palette or my paint plate and bringing it over, all right? Again, folks, have fun with this. Don't stress too much. Sometimes we're going to spill paint. Sometimes we're going to make mistakes with our paint. Uh, it can be a little bit stressful for some people. Just relax. This is about having fun. This is about learning a little bit of, of art. We're creating. Just kind of let yourself relax and uh, see what happens. See what you create. As I said earlier, um, you're not going to create. Your piece may not necessarily look, look just like mine uh, or your neighbors, whoever you're painting with, or maybe you're painting by yourself, but it is going to be unique. It's going to be just, it's going to look just like your painting. All right. As long as it looks kind of like Lola, you're creating your, your own Lola. In other words, is what I'm saying. As long as it kind of looks like this one, kind of, you're fine. So I'm adding white into the ears. Okay. I'm avoiding the eyes. I'm avoiding the snout. The snout's going to be purple generally. Okay. I'm coming around doing this, doing that like this. And 
my paint's my paint's obviously wet. I just put it on. I I didn't put any on my on the tuft just yet. I'm going to switch brushes so I can put some into the tuft. But as you notice, your paint is thick, or the paint in this case can be thick. I'm I'm layering it kind of thick. I'll I'll bring the painting close to the canvas here in just a moment. Actually, I might as well do it now. Don't know how much you can tell, but I'm just basically covering everything but the eyes, the snout, and I didn't cover the snout. I'm, I'm sorry, the tuft of hair. I'm, about, I'm going to do that now. I switched brushes because the smaller brushes give us better control. And so because there's lots of little small edges and corners in here, I, I wanted to get a, a brush that I could more easily um, cover the inside of the tuft without going over my lines. Okay, and then I can use the brush to get closer to like around the eyes, around the snout. Okay. And yes, I covered where my eyelashes are, but for the, and for those of you that have done it, you can see that you can see the eyelashes still coming through. Um, I'm good with that because when I add paint, it's black. It's going to cover it, it, the eyelashes are going to come out just fine. So there we go. All right. I'm just touching up some areas that I missed earlier and that's it. Okay. So what am I going to do next? I'm going to stick to the same brush. I clean it up just a little tiny bit. I don't know if you guys can guess at home what I'm about to do. It doesn't really matter where we go next, but in my case, for you that are following along, we're going to do the eyes. So I just take some black. I just dip my brush right into the black. Okay, I'm not uh, going to mix it or anything like that. I just come right on over. I'm using my little quarter inch brush. And I just do, I do the edges first. Yes, you might get some mixing between the black and the white paint. Don't worry about it for now. If it looks a little bit gray, we'll come back and add another layer of black later once what we're laying down right now, what we're putting on the eye right now, gets covered up. Well, sorry, once it dries up. Okay, nice and slow here. Be careful with the edges. For those of you that are, um, maybe you have a smaller brush than this, like the little skinny liner brush, that I have. If you want to switch to this to do some of the detail work here, like around the edges, you can feel free to do so, like this. So I'm dipping my liner brush into the paint, my black paint, and I just come and maybe touch up my edges. Okay? Just like that. Okay. I'm not worried about my eyelashes right now. Um, I am going to do some purple on the snout and pink for my nose. So Take my same brush that I just used for the eyeballs, not for the eyes, not the liner brush, but my quarter inch brush. I put it into the water cup and I swirl it around quite a bit. I want to get all that black out of there. Okay, so I'll do that a few, I'll do that two, three times. Okay, and I'll, again, I'll do a little test over here. I see that I've got a little black still in there. It's not too much black, but I'll do it one more time. There we go, most of it's gone. So I've got purple on my plate. If you don't have purple and you only have red and blue, you can mix red and blue together and you will get purple. Add some white to it and you'll lighten it up. If you want to make it darker, add a little tiny bit of black. Okay, so I take some of my purple, I bring it over to my mix plate because I want to I want to make a light purple. So I bring it over here, find a little spot, a little clean spot on my on my mix plate. Now this is just a little tiny bit of purple. I take some white from my main uh, plate and I do this. I mix purple and the white together to make a light purple. It's kind of a lavender. So on the, on the original Lola, she has a little bit of blue mixed in. So I'll take a little bit of blue as well, a little tiny bit, mix them together. And I'm going to get a purple, a bluish purple. Okay. And I'll, I'm only doing this to the point where I'm satisfied with it. If you're happy with just a lavender color or a darker purple, that's fine too. Okay. So here we go. I got the color that I want. I'm going to take this and I'm going to do this. Avoiding the heart for the nose, right? The nose, heart, heart, nose. I'm going to go all the way around like this. All the way around like this. Right? I go up to the edge like this. Not sure if those of you at home can see this, but even though I've covered up my mouth lines, I can still see them coming through the paint, which is what I want. Okay? So my original pencil marks for the snout, for the mouth, are still there. Whoops, and I didn't do the top of the, the top of the nose. 
So let's get that covered up. Okay. All right. Very cool. For now, I'm going to leave that part alone, but I am going to make my nose pink. So I'm going to use a little tiny liner brush for that, which I used for the um, outside of the eyes earlier. So I'm, I'm going to clean that up first before I dip it into my pink paint. All right, perfect. So I grabbed some pink paint. Pink, you can also make pink if you don't have it. If you have red and white, mix the two together and you'll get a pink. Right, this is a neon pink, so it's a little different, but you'll still, you'll be okay if you're using a mixture of red and white or if you're using just a regular pink. How's that for a nose? Okay, very cool. There's my nose. All right, clean up, cleaning up my brush a little bit. Here's what I'm going to do next, everybody. You all notice that on the original Lola, I have a, a gray outline going around most of her body, right? All the way around. I'm gonna create gray by mixing black, a little bit of black and some white. So I take some black, bring it over to a spot on my mix plate, grab some white, bring it over, mix the two together. It's a very light gray. So, but if you wanna make yours a darker gray, that's fine too. Mix it, mix it. And in this case, I'm going to add a little bit of water to it so that it, it flows, so the flow is better, so it mixes better and it's easier to work with. So I just grabbed it with like a couple of drops of water, brought them over with my brush. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to outline my Lola. Now watch this, everybody. Because I'm doing little tiny hard to do lines on the edges or anywhere, they're hard to do. I can use my hand. I'm putting my hand down on my table and I'm putting my paint hand. Okay, so the hand that I'm not painting with that goes on the table. Okay, it can go right next to my easel if you're painting on a table. And that's another thing I mentioned. You could be doing this on a table, flat on a table. And I'll do this. I'll put my hand over my wrist and I'll come over. This makes it easier for me to paint little tiny lines. If I, if I don't do this, if I don't use my wrist and I just kind of do this with my hand floating in the air, it can be a little tricky. My hand can be a little shaky. It can be done and you can practice it. But if it gets tricky for you, then I suggest using your hand and doing this. If you're painting on a, on a table where you've got the, um, your canvas or paper or construction paper, whatever it is that you're painting on, flat on the table, it's easier if you're over the top, right? You're a little more stable that way. But when you're painting on, a, on an easel like this, this can be a little tricky. So this is one of the tricks that we use. Another thing is if the canvas is dry enough, I can put my palm on it and use my palm up against the canvas to stabilize my hand. All right, here we go, here we go. So again, all the way around. Okay. While I'm doing this, the rest of the paint that I've applied to Lola, the white, the black, the purple, etc., is drying, which is what I want. Acrylic paint, tempera paint is relatively dry, dries relatively fast, which means that in a few minutes you've got a dry painting, right? But depending on where you are, sometimes it may take a little bit longer. If you're in an area where it's cold and rainy or humid, it may take a little longer to dry. If you're in an area that's hot, um, then your painting will dry a little bit more quickly, okay? So, here's what we're going to do now. I'm going to let this dry for about five minutes, okay? We're going to let this dry for about five minutes, and then I'll actually let's do 10 minutes, and you at home can do it for a little longer, a little less, depending. What I want is I want to be able to touch the areas on my canvas, and they're dry, okay? What we're going to do after this is add another layer of paint. It's going to make everything a little brighter, a little stronger, and it's going to look a little bit nicer. But you can already see Lola's coming together, okay? All right, see you guys in about 10 minutes. Okay, everybody, I am back. Um, 
I didn't quite wait 10 minutes, but I waited for the majority of everything to be nice and dry. Touch it, and I don't get any paint on my fingers. That's what I want. The one that's going to take longest to dry in my particular case is the pink of the nose. That's not totally dry just yet. I'm not worried about that. Um, but I'm going to, I look at this, I'm looking at this now, and you don't have to do this at home, but my background is a little bit on the light side, and I can see a lot of um, uneven areas. I'm going to fix that up a little bit by simply adding another layer of that teal color that I mixed. Um, and if you ran out of it, just make some more. It doesn't have to match exactly. Remember, I did green. I did I did green and blue and white to get the teal color. So I'm going to, so here's what I'm doing. I'm taking another layer of this teal that I created earlier, the very first, very beginning of the paint session, the painting part of this, and I'm going to do another layer on the background. Okay, I just want it, well, I want that background a little bit more solid. So I take my brush, the big brush, the one inch brush. I dip some of that extra water into my plate again, right? I just want to do that. And then I'm going to take my paper towel and squeeze out the excess, the extra water. So taking a little bit of the green and a little bit of the blue, right? So I'm taking some blue, putting it on my plate, taking some green, putting it on the plate. And then I'm taking some white and I'm mixing those together to make my teal, my background color. And again, because I'm mixing a new batch of this, the colors in this case probably aren't gonna to match too much. Not exactly, but I don't worry about it. Whoop, there I go hitting the camera again. I'm not too worried about it. I'm taking a little bit more water, bringing it over. But so green, blue, whoop, maybe I mixed a little too much blue, that's all right. I mix this till I get the color that I want. I make sure that I've got water in there, right? I think. You've all gotten the idea now that water helps us paint when we're working with acrylic. So here we go. So I'm going to take my brush and the same thing that I did earlier. I'm going to avoid um, adding any paint onto Lola's body. So I'll start with the edge over here. And as you'll notice right away, this makes my painting, the background, more solid. I don't have all those uneven strokes or uneven areas where there's shade, where some areas are lighter than others. And some people may like that. If you like that, if you like that uneven stuff back like back in here like this, then perfect. Leave it like that. Um, in this case, I'm just trying to do two things. One, show you if you wanted to change it up and add, what happens when you add another layer of paint, right? It makes everything a lot more solid. And I'll go around like this, all the way around. Again, I'm not going to touch Lola's body, her ears or anything like that. To get a lot closer, I'm going to uh, I'm going to use the smaller brush. So I'll take my I'll take this brush, put it back in the cup. Again, folks, at any point, if I'm going too fast, um, just go back, rewatch any parts that you need to watch again. I'm switching over to my quarter inch brush because I'm going to come in nice and tight, just like this, all the way around. But yeah, you have the luxury at home to um, back things up, right? Um, and rewatch, pause, all that stuff. So take your time when you're doing this, but mainly I want you guys to have some fun. This is about having fun. The creative process is really, really neat. It can be stressful sometimes. I know kids, parents have fun with this. There's lots of time in life to create stuff, to paint. If you don't like it, too much fix it if you can right and then just remember you can always watch the video again start all over with a different you know canvas or paper or whatever it is that you're painting on and do it again practice does make perfect but here we go painting is like like anything else anything a sport a musical instrument even riding a bike the more you practice the better you get so let's not forget that we did our edges, right? We did the top, right, left, the sides like this. So that's what we're doing. And again, I'm not doing anything with the bottom. We can leave that for the very end. There we go. I like that. <clears throat> okay. So another thing that I want to do is add another layer of white. And as you remember, we used the big brush the big one, uh, almost it's a three quarter, three quarter inch brush. Again, anything that's close to it is fine. My water is dirty. 
I'm going to see if I can, I'm going to clean up my brush as much as I can with this, right? Like this, I'll swirl it around. I'll take a paper towel, squeeze out the excess. I'm trying to remove as much of that green paint that's on there as possible. Okay, I'll do that repeatedly until the brush, when I wipe it under the paper towel, it's pretty clean. That's what I want. And then I'm going to take some white, which I'm running low on. I need to, I'm going to go ahead and put some more on the plate. So give me a sec. Okay. So I've got some more white paint onto my, I put some more white paint onto my paint plate. Again, I'm not mixing the white paint with anything. I just grab it straight from the plate, bring it over and I start to apply it, put it onto our pretty little Lola. And Lola's coming together nicely she's looking happier and happier with each additional brush stroke okay so around like this again I'm trying to avoid the edges a little bit so I don't go over into the green right trying trying to stay within the lines kind of like when you paint with um, when you do crayons when you when you color it's all the way around all the way around and then once I'm done with this brush, once I can't, uh, when, I, when I want to switch over to a smaller brush to get to the, closer to some of those edges, I'm going to take my a smaller one of my brushes. Whoop, there I go again, hitting my camera and doing this. I'm going to have to find a way, modify it so the camera, I'm not using a stand, but maybe uh, something that's floating, not floating, but coming from, from the ceiling. Anyway, here we go. Switch brushes. Come on over and I cover my ears. Do a second coat on my ears. You know, I don't even know if I did a first coat on these ears the first time around. I may have missed that. And so those of you at home that caught that, I apologize. But yes, we did want an original a coat on the ears the first time. I don't remember if I did or not. No big deal. We're covered. We're doing it now. So all the way around. Come down like this. Down like this. That's what happens sometimes when we're recording, right? Oh, and by the way, folks, this is my first actual tutorial video. So uh, let me know how it goes in the comment section below. Let me know what you thought, right? Um, hopefully everyone, I know part of it, you guys might be having a hard time seeing exactly what I'm doing. Uh, when I do the eyelashes, I know you have to be real careful that I don't block with my hand what I'm doing. The areas are so small. So all the way around. And also don't forget, folks, that I take requests. If there are particular cartoon characters that you like, Pikachu, Tinkerbell, you know, stuff like that. Um, maybe you're learning about dinosaurs in school. Teachers, if you're going to be teaching about a particular subject, for example, dinosaurs, birds, etc., let me know if you'd like to see a tutorial on something like that. And then I'll, I'll, you may see me create one. Okay, I'm totally open to creating what you guys want to see. All right, so I've done a second layer of my white paint on Lola. I'm using brush strokes like this, kind of thick paint. I'm laying the paint down a little bit on the thick side. Um, the thick paint makes it so that you can see the lines, the edges of the paint, and it actually starts to look a little bit like fur. Okay, I don't know if you'd be able to see it if I bring the painting up close to the camera, but I'll do that in a second. Again, I'm grabbing paint like this, kind of thick on the brush, and then I just come in and I lay it on thick onto the canvas. I didn't do that on the very first layer because I wanted it to dry quickly. But now that we're doing on the second layer, by doing this, putting paint thick onto that canvas, it looks a little bit like fur. All right, Lola's a llama. She has fur. So there we go, all the way around, all the way around like that. All right, uh, look at Lola. Maybe lift it up a little bit. Not sure if you can see at home, but paint's kind of thick and again it looks like she's got some fur from up close it looks like she's got fur cool oh i think i missed a little spot right there all the way around i went into the nose the, the um, snout a bit okay there we go there we go all right i am happy with that i'm going to take since i'm working with white right now since we're doing white i'm going to take some white and bring it over to my mix plate. I'm gonna take a little bit of pink, just a touch of pink, mix the two together to make a light pink. And I'm sure some of you can already guess where I'm going with this. I'm gonna do the ears, the inside of those ears like this. All right, there we go, there we go. Inside of those ears, boom. 
can if I want a little bit darker because I want them to show up a little bit more I will do it again if I'll mix a little bit more I'll make it a little bit darker there we go look at that boys and girls boom boom and over here I might have gotten a little too close to the edge so I take the back of my brush I flipped it over and just wipe some of that off later on I can come in and do some if I wanted to put a little white in there on the edge to clean that up okay switching brushes now oh no same brush we're gonna do another layer of the blue purple that we did for the snout so what did we mix do you guys remember a little bit of purple took some purple put it over here took a little bit of blue put those two together and then I took some white mixed it in that gives us kind of a blue purple take a little bit of water because I want to spread a little bit put a little water in there make it easier to work with and then I'll come over like this and I'm sure you can tell but this is doing the same thing that it did to the background which is darken it up a little bit and make things a little bit more uniform for those of you that continue to follow me, I will be doing another tutorial later in the week. Well, today is today is Friday. I don't know if I'll post this. I'm not sure when I'll post this, but look for another video within the next few days. Okay, I'm not sure what we're going to do yet or else I'd tell you. But, um, but we'll see. Something really neat. So there's that. I take my brush, put it back in. I'm going to take my little liner brush. has a little bit of white on it. I'm going to clean that up. And I'm taking some black, going straight to my black. Okay, doing this. Now, when you're working with a little liner brush and you're trying to make little tiny lines, what you want to do is take some water, mix it into that black paint. Okay. So and then what I'll do is I'll take the brush and as I pull it, I put it into the paint. When I pull it away, I'll spin it. And when I spin it, that makes the point on the brush really thin. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. I'm going to do the mouth lines. Come all the way around, down and under. So I'm sure you can still see them on yours. Remember we had the little upside down V. You can still see the pencil marks. I can see mine on mine. Hopefully you can see yours on yours. Otherwise, upside down V and then, and then out. Okay, upside down V and then out. And there's Lola's little mouth. Okay. Now I'm going to go around the bottom part like this. Outline the bottom part of the snout. There we go. Oh, Lola's coming around. Look how Lola, how pretty Lola's becoming. He's starting to look like a llama. Pretty little llama. Okay. One other thing that I want to do, the eyes on the original Lola are a little bit wider, a little bit bigger. I do want to fix that on mine. I want my eyes a little bit bigger, so I'm just using the same little liner brush. And I'm coming around just adding a little bit of paint to the outside of each eye. Yep, I have some white paint on the, on the background and then the two colors might mix a little bit. I'm just careful. But if they do mix, I just clean my brush and I just continue doing this. So I like that. I'm going to come over to the other side and do the same thing. Remember, I'm using a little skinny brush here. Okay, a little tiny skinny brush. The same thing to the other side. All right, there we go. Good. Now what I'm going to do is the eyelashes. And this is where things get tricky for the you. So for those of you that are following along so you can see what I do. I'm going to try to do this so that I, one, I don't mess it up, but two, um, I'll do it, for, do it from the side where you can see what I'm doing. Take a little drink of my green tea here. throat's getting a little dry there from all the talking so all right here's where I'm going to start I'm going to start actually I'm going to start on the bottom and work my way up I can start at the top work my way down that but that's probably going to be a little harder for you to see so maybe if I start from the bottom <clears throat> you'll see what I'm taught what I'm doing in this case I'm going to take my hand put my the paint the hand that I'm not painting with I put it down on the table put my painting hand on top of my wrist and I will do this I try to hold the brush normally for something like this I would hold the brush a little bit closer because it gives you more control for looser paintings and stuff I'll use I'll hold the outer part of my brush I kind of like that when, when I'm doing something nice and loose it's a cool little way of painting um, 
Again, normally I would hold my brush a little closer. It gives me more control, but because I need you guys to see what I'm doing, I'm going to try to do this from with the, holding the brush a little further out. Those of you at home, try it like this first. Okay, a little closer to the front. More control. And again, practice. If you have a piece of paper next to you, practice on that first. Practice making some lines on your paper. All right, so here we go. I'm going to do this bottom one first, bottom eyelash. So here I go, nice and thin. Remember what I said about putting the brush into the paint and spinning it. It's exactly what I'm doing right now. Spin it, and I'll come over and I'm going to do the middle one. I make them really skinny first. If you guys look at the original, the eyelashes are a little bit thicker. I'm not worried about that. Right now, I'm just trying to do the shape first, okay? And I'm sure you can see the pencil marks on yours, right? You can still see the pencil marks coming through. I'm following my pencil marks. If not, it's the same process as what we did earlier. Okay, right side, right eye, her left eye. I'm gonna see, hopefully I don't block the view here. This is gonna be a little trick here. I'm gonna do the bottom one first. Again, my hand goes over here, come over. Okay, just like that. Okay, the one in the middle. There we go. And the one on top. All right, there we go. Once I've done that, I'll come in and make them a little bit thicker. Each one a little bit thicker, especially at the base where they start from the eye, they're a little bit thicker. And as they get out to the outside, they get a little skinnier. Your eyelashes don't have to do this. But if you want to make yours thicker, you do it thicker at the, at the where it's closer to the eye. Okay, do the same thing to the one in the middle. Okay, there we go. And then I'll do that to the one on the top. All right, we're getting pretty close to done here. A few little, few little things like the headband and such. And we're going to be in business. All right, there we go, all the way around. Cool, look at that. There we go, look at Lola. How pretty is, is Lola looking? Since we're working with black right now, I'm gonna do the nostrils. Okay, there we go. Little line in the middle. All right, little, little line that divides the nose. There we go. Pretty, look at Lola. Lola's looking nice. I keep looking at the camera because I can see Lola right there, so. Okay, what is next, everyone? Take a look, what is next? We can do this little gray outline around the mouth, pink gray, so we'll do that, and then we're gonna work on those flowers. Okay, I hope you guys are excited because things are looking really nice right now. All right, so I take a little bit of pink, and I mix it over here. Again, I'm doing this outside line around the snout. It's really light. Uh, maybe mix it with a little bit of gray, a little bit of the gray that I have left over. I mix the two together. This isn't ha doesn't have to be a perfect color. It could even be just, just pink if you want. So I'm using my little liner brush and I'm going to come around. Okay. Just like that. Ooh, I like that. I like that um, combination of the blue or the blue purple and, the, um, and this pink. Pretty cool looking. All right. Just like that. Cool. I like that. Hope you guys like it at home too. Okay. So what's next? The flowers, of course, the flowers, all right? So we're doing flowers next. Okay, so the flowers are pretty easy. I'm gonna use my little liner brush. I'm gonna start with pink, like this little pink flower right there. In this case, I'm gonna take some pink, bring it over to my mix plate, and I'm going to add some water to it. You don't need a lot of paint because the flowers are small, but we definitely wanna make sure we add quite a bit of paint in here, uh, uh, quite a bit of water. We don't want it runny though. Don't want it running, and the way you test for that is if once you've added water to it, hold the hold the canvas or the plate like this, and if the water the paint runs and it's too too watery. All right, we're gonna start with this flower right here. Here's what I'm doing. I'm gonna make one. At first, this is going to be really light. Two, three, four, five little circles that are connected. And then leave the center open. Okay. So I made five little circles connected. 
the center's open. I'm going to leave that for now. I'm going to come over while the, so this is going to dry a bit and I'll come back and do another layer over it to make it a little more bright like what these look like. I'm going to come over and do the one on the right hand side. If you guys want different colors at home, please do different colors. It's up to you, whatever colors you'd like. Here we go. One circle. Whoop, that might be a little too big, but that's okay. I can, I can change it a bit. Two, sorry, three circles on three, four circles and five circles. Okay, the inside's empty. All right, I'm going to switch over to blue. A little bit of blue. Okay, all I did is grab some blue. Actually, I did it on my paint plate. We're going to do it on our mix plate just to be, just to keep things consistent. Sort of like this. Mix my blue together, blue with the white. Sorry, blue and water. Blue and some water. All right. Now we're making this blue flower on the end there. How many, how many circles? Five. There's one, two. And they can touch. Okay, the pink and the blue flower petals can touch. We're making flower petals. These little circles are flower petals. There's four and five. All right. Look at that. Okay. Now, the flowers on my original Lola are a little bit bigger. That's okay. I don't mind that. Even Lola herself. Lola on this one is a little bit bigger than on the original. That's okay. I don't mind that at all. All right, we're gonna make ourselves, ourselves a purple flower. I take purple directly from the paint plate. I don't have to mix it. I'll come over and we're doing this flower right there, okay? This purple flower right there. So how many petals? How many circles that represent petals? We're doing five, okay? So we got four and I'm, and I'm just kind of adjusting as I go. We got five. Look at that. Five little petals. Okay. Cool. Now I'm going to take a green flower. I'm going to make a green one. We're using green right from my mix plate. Bring it over to my, sorry, from my paint plate to my mix plate. Take some water, so a little bit of white to make it light green, lighter green. Mix the two together. I want to make sure I have enough to make a flower. Okay, here we go. Green flower. And this one, because it's kind of in the center, I'm going to make this one just a little bit bigger. Just a little bit. Now, some of the flowers can touch. They don't all have to touch. They're on a little wreath that you might not be able to see, like a little headband. It's, you know, maybe not easy to see, real tiny, skinny thing. Okay, so there we go, green flower. Look at that, very cool. And then last one is gonna be a gold one. So I have some gold paint, don't need a lot. I know that um, this is the first time we're using gold paint in our painting, okay? So here we go, taking the, taking the gold over to my mix plate, adding water to it. This particular gold paint, acrylic paint that I'm using is pretty thick. And um, I'm adding water to uh, make things flow a little bit better. So there we go, just like that. Then I'm going to bring that over and uh, go right there. Well, I add a little bit too much water. I can already tell. Or I didn't mix it well enough. That's okay. That's okay. One petal. Two, whoops. Two petals. Three petals, four petals, and five petals. Okay, look at that. So I'm going to let these dry for a little bit. I'm going to work on my outlines a little bit. So here's one thing that you can do. So you'll look at your painting as you're working it and take a real good look at it, right? And you decide, okay, are there anything, anything that I want to change, any adjustments that I want to make? For example, if I want, like earlier when I made my eyes bigger, I can go in there and make them bigger. Maybe I want to um, add more pink in the ears, right? We could do that. Uh, maybe I want to make sure that my edges, the, the gray around the edges are really um, defined or all the way around. They go all the way around uh, Lola. 
uh, maybe I can do that. So if I don't have enough gray, I'll make some more. But again, all I'm doing is making little adjustments, right? Let, I'll look at it, make little adjustments. A lot of people get stuck thinking that their painting has to look perfect right from the get-go. But it's a but it's a process. There's there are steps involved. And as you're going, as you're going, you make little adjustments. You'll sometimes stop, you look at it, and you'll go back and go over an area that you've already done, right? You'll add some more to another area, you'll fix this, you'll fix that. That's all a part of how painting goes. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit more pink in there just, just to see what happens here. Since we got a little time while we're waiting for the flowers to dry, I'm going to take a little bit of pink and maybe make these a little more. Look at that. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think so. All right, I'll take it. That's cool. I want to also add a little more gray around. Um, more gray around. The area around the tuft, right up here, tuft of hair at the top. Just to define it a little bit more. All the way around. All right, look at that. Okay, so then going back and doing another layer of flowers on the headband, this is pretty much done. Also, don't know if you all noticed, but on the original, I got these little bits of uh, glitter flakes that I went in and added to the center of each flower. I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to grab some of those and I'm going to do that. Just for those of you at home that would like to do it. Sometimes I will add glitter to these paintings. Actually, a lot of the paintings will have glitter. Um, and so that is another thing that we'll, uh, we'll be doing from time to time. So give me a minute. I'm going to grab that stuff and I'll, I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I'm back. Um, the flowers still aren't completely dry. But I can, I'm not too worried about that. They look good enough. I would come back and add another layer over them and then touch them up a little bit to make them a little bit bigger. They where they would actually all touch. Like I said earlier, they don't have to, but you know, for those of you who would want them to touch, I would simply come in, whoops, um, and I would take my little liner brush and for example, like let's say maybe between this pink one and this green one, I would increase the size on each so that they eventually connect. Um, that's not necessary though. This still works okay. Um, actually, I'm going to go ahead and do that so I can show you guys what I'm talking about. So I take some pink, I remember my water, and then in a moment I'm going to show you guys the glitter process. Pretty basic. So I would do this. Again, I wouldn't do this till it's just dry, so I would give it, you know, 10 minutes or so. Um, but so you guys can all see what I'm talking about. I would do this. I'm just increasing the size of some of these flowers to make them so that they will connect. Or close to connect. Remember they all have five petals. So and they could have four. Nobody says that they have to have five petals. They could have six. Um, again, that's up to you guys. So I'm going to take some green. Whoop. For this one here and I'm just gonna, just gonna do this now they don't have to touch all the way but they're pretty close there so I'm good with that okay I'm going to add a little purple to the purple flower make that one a little bit bigger as well come with that all right there we go okay I'm liking that Okay, so you can see what I'm talking about. I'll make adjustments to make everything work. And then once I'm happy with it, I leave it alone. Okay, what I want to do right now is uh, talk about this, the little glitter. Again, the glitter bits inside the uh, headband, the flower headband there. So I've got this, I use a bunch of glitter in my paints. This one here is this little uh, fine glitter dot, uh, paint. It's actually paint and glue. <clears throat> you brush it on. I took some of that. I put that on the, a little plate that I'm, I'm going to be using for this. This is going to be our glue. And you could, if you have like Elmer's glue, that will work as well. And then I got these little actual glitter bits, large glitter flakes that I'm going to put on the center of each flower. So what I do first is I'll take my brush, the bristle part of the brush. I'll come in and I'll do this. So I'm taking some of this. 
I'm just adding some of this to the center. Again, glue would work. You could even use paint. You could actually take some of the white paint and do this. The only reason why I don't use the, the paint as much is because if it if it gets on the glitter, right, it'll cover up some of the shine on that glitter. So, so again, I'm, I'm using this as glue. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the other end of this, the other end of my brush, and I'll dip a little tiny, just barely touch the uh, glitter, the glitter paint. And I'll, I just want a little tiny bit there so that when I touch a glitter, a piece of glitter, it sticks to the end of my brush. Now I'll take that over and I'll do this. Put it right there in the center. There we go. That's stuck. I'll bring the canvas closer to the camera in just a minute. So I go through and I'll do this to each flower. And I could add more than one glitter if I want. It'll make that area in the center pop a little bit more. Okay. So I'll do it, I'll add at least one to each one. And what that does is it creates a really cool little effect where the where it's nice and shiny. Okay, look at that. Very cool. Now Lola's super happy. There are other kinds of glitter paints. Um, bigger, slightly bigger flakes where I can go through and add glitter wherever I want. And we'll do that on some future, on some future paintings. But all right, folks, there you have it. There's our, our beautiful Miss Lola. I hope you guys had a lot of fun <clears throat> doing this. Remember, you can back up at any time and redo this back up and go over any areas that you've missed and then uh, oh one last thing sign your piece i like for people to sign their pieces it's not something that's absolutely necessary but um you can sign it however you'd like whatever color you'd like take a little area on your painting just so that people know who did it and sign it i'll take my little liner brush mix it with a little bit of water okay i'll do this and i'm going to sign mine Jesse, you can find a little area, bottom corners, you can do it at the top if you want. I usually do mine at the corners. So here I go. J E S S E, Jesse. All right, perfect. Okay, everybody, sorry, I did a little bit of a mess up on the camera. Uh, where I started to record and I or I thought I was recording when I did the, I added glitter to I added glitter and I made adjustments to the flowers but you get the idea I'm going to just kind of recap it really quickly as far as making adjustments to the flowers you just take each color of each paint right and you all you do all you're doing is touching them up so that they you're cleaning them up a little bit you're refining them you're making them larger um, so that they touch right uh, for example the pink one here I, would, I just made a little bit of, I made it bigger. I just made it a little bit bigger. Now, most of these flowers are going to have five petals. That's what makes them look a little bit more like flowers. But yours could have six. They could have four, right? That's all going to work. So, all I, again, all I did was waited for these petals to dry a little bit. And then I came and added um, some more paint. Then the glitter part of it. So, the glitter part of it. I've got this little glitter paint here and some actual glitter fake flakes. The glitter paint I put down on my mix plate here on the side. Don't worry about this blue here. That's something I was doing here a moment when I signed it. And again, that was part of what I was going to show you. But anyhow, we'll recap it. Glitter paint. All I did was, and this is this here. Okay. All I did is pour out a little bit. This is going to be our, our glue. This is all that you could use Elmer glue. You could use even paint to do this. But I would take this and I would put it at the center of each flower. Just take a little bit, put some in the center of each flower, right? Actually, I'll even do it right now. At least it'll still work. So this is what I would do. Just regard that there's any glitter in the center at the moment. Pretend that there's no glitter here now, right? Because you can see the little glitter flakes in there. I think you can see them shining through the, the camera. But so I add some of this glitter paint. Now what I do, I take the back. I put some of these glitter flakes onto the plate right here. You can see them floating around here. I'll take the back of my brush. I'll dip it into the glitter paint a little bit like this, and then I'll clean it up a little bit. I just want a little tiny bit on here. And I'll touch the back of this onto a glitter, piece of glitter, and it'll pick it up, and then I'll come over, 
and I'll do this. Okay, and it stays right on the center of that pedal. I'll do this a few times. Okay, and I'll, I can do one or more of these glitter flakes at the center of each pedal. The more I do, the more shinier it's going to be. Some of them already have more than one from, from earlier when I, was, when I thought I was recording, but I wasn't. And I'm just doing this. I'll, I'll pick up the, um, I'll pick up my can, the canvas and bring it closer to the camera here in just a sec. There we go. So again, I'll do this to each center of, of each pedal. And here's what you got. I'm sure you can see that. Now Lola's really happy. Now Lola's super happy. So as far as glitter, there are, there are going to be other projects where I end up using more glitter than this. But usually I end up using glitter paints. The glitter paints you brush on just like you do the paint. Um, create some really cool effects. It really makes the paintings pop. But that's for another session for the next one. Uh, stay tuned, folks. Over the next few days, I'll be posting the, the next video. I don't know what I'm doing just yet, but that's coming soon. All right. So here's our Mrs. Lola. Ms. Lola, hope your Ms. Lola came out beautiful as well. Give me one second, folks. Don't leave just yet. I want to uh, give you, you know, talk a little bit before we end the video. Okay, boys and girls, parents, teachers, that's the end of our video for today. Hopefully you all enjoyed yourselves. I want to say thank you for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. There are going to be very many more videos to come. Uh, so please be on the lookout for that. Please like, subscribe to the channel. Like the video and su subscribe to my channel. Also <clears throat> hit the little alert bell at the bottom uh, of the video so that anytime I load up a new uh, video to the channel, you'll get an alert set to you directly and let you know. So you, you know, so you're on top of my postings. <clears throat> also, I would love to hear your feedback. I would love to know what it is that you enjoyed about today's session. And also, if you think I can make improvements, um, maybe my camera angle, maybe the lighting, etc. cetera, uh, let me know. I would love to hear all of your opinions. Also, I would love to see your some pictures of your painting for today. For those of you who followed along and created Lola with me, I would love if you would send me some pictures. Uh, I'll have my email listed below. Uh, I would eventually, I will eventually create a video uh, montage of some pictures that you guys are sending out. Maybe your picture will appear in that video. All right. So also don't forget, I take requests for those of you that are into a particular character on TV. Maybe there's a cartoon that you like. Maybe you're studying a particular subject in school, like dinosaurs, for example, or eagles, etc., etc. Let me know and I will do a, or maybe do a video tutorial on that, depending on what it is that you request. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here today and be on the lookout for the next video. Talk to you guys very much very soon. My name is Jesse. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram on under the same name as his YouTube page, Kids Zone Artapalooza. Hope you guys follow me there as well. I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.